Hey Pokemon Masters, Berkey Potobi here, and first we thought Pokedex entries were weird because possibly they were written by the kids who were going on the adventures. That was kind of confirmed in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And then following that, they put Rotom in there. So what do they expect? These entries were going to get weird. And with the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we get a slew of new, new Pokedex entries. There's a whole bunch of them. Some of new Pokemon and some of returning Pokemon with new extra added lore. So I wanted to jump into 10 slash 11 of my favorite Pokedex entries that I think are particularly interesting that you might enjoy. We've got Tree of Evolution stuff in here, stuff about ghosts, all sorts and whatnot. Speaking of whatnot, a special thank you to today's sponsor, Whatnot, who I'll talk about a little bit later on in the video. But for now, let's jump into some Pokedex entries. Starting with number 10, we've got Stantler, and its Pokemon Scarlet and Violet entries are pretty much what you'd expect for a game following Pokemon Legends Arceus. Apparently, this Pokemon used to live in much harsher environments and had stronger psychic powers. And in Violet, it even mentions that it was once able to evolve under its own power. This is how Weirdeer used to exist in the wild, Stantler's Hisuian evolution that is, of course, not available in modern day, probably due to overhunting of its antlers. In fact, I think that's directly referenced in other Pokedex entries. But it seems what killed off Weird Ear isn't actually the overhunting, but perhaps the harsh Hisuian environments that forced evolution out of this Pokemon. But since it's not been in those environments for a long time, it can no longer achieve that form of evolution on its own. Interesting to note that Hisuian evolutions, like perhaps other evolutions like Klebor, they, they might be possible through the help of science and, and people. Speaking of new old evolutions, let's talk about Veyroth, a Pokemon that doesn't have a new evolution itself, but does show how it evolved from other Pokemon when you look at its Pokedex entry. It talks about its stress level rising, and if it gets too stressed, it will become sick. This actually mimics the Pokedex entries of the like of Primate from previous generations that talk about how it gets so angry it can die. And when you look at Vigoroth's evolution in Slacking and Primate, they actually do look pretty similar. And I know you might think, hang on, isn't Vigoroth and Slacking, aren't they sloths? They're kind of a mix between sloths and King Kong gorillas. And of course, we've got Primate here with the same pig nose getting so angry just like Vigoroth. This Pokedex entry shows how they're related and that, yeah, too much stress can make these Pokemon sick and ultimately die. It seems that if slacking wasn't as lazy as it was, we might have another Annihilate situation on our hands. Another short but peculiar Pokedex entry and feels like its theory rate is that of Bronzor, a Pokemon where the pattern on its back is said to contain some kind of mysterious power. Bronzong and Bronzor have always been interesting since the days of old Hisui. Bronzong was found in the ground and is said to be able to open portals to another world. But we see the face pattern of Bronzor on the coin of Gimigul, which is said to have been born this way in a treasure chest 1500 years ago. I've done a video talking about how I think Gimme Ghoul is related to the Ruin Quartet in this generation, but how does that tie into Bronzor? Which by the way, you have to use chipped pieces of Bronzor to help get the item to evolve Cerulege and Armourouge, which are two more ghosty fire spirit Pokemon. What does it all mean? There is so much theory bait here and I cannot connect all these dots together. So Fungus is an odd one this generation because not only do we get this new kind of prehistoric version of Among Us in the uh, from from the Paradox forms, uh, where it's kind of got this more reptilian looks, and it looks like oh maybe maybe this Pokeball look existed on prehistoric Pokemon that evolved to look like mushrooms. But then you've also got Fungus's Pokedex entries talking about how perhaps the person who made the Pokeball was inspired by this Pokemon. Except we know that can't be true because Pokeballs are made from Apricorns, much like the original Hisuian Voltorb. So that look already existed in nature separately, so I guess that must just be a rumor? But also it means Fungus and Among Us evolved to look like Pokeballs in a time before Pokeballs really existed, although I suppose Pokeballs did exist back in time there, but that, that's maybe some story spoilers. Some spoiler stuff for Scarlet there. But uh, yeah, this one is a little bit of a muddle. Quaxly, while I will say I prefer the other two starters when it comes to Pokedex entry, Quaxly's line has got it down because every single Pokedex entry from all of its evolutions talks about how it basically traveled from far away, how this Pokemon's from another region, which region is it from originally? Is it related to Psyduck or Swan? Or is it related to some other duck Pokemon? Pokemon. What is the deal and where did this Pokemon come from? If this isn't a native Pokemon of this region, is it possible we'll see a future Legends game with a different evolution for Quaxley? Which, to be honest, I hope so because I don't really like the Quaxley evolution line. It just wasn't for me. Quaxley is best when it looks like Quaxley. Another new Pokemon that's got a really interesting Pokedex entry that shows us more about the tree of evolution is literally a tree. Well, it'll evolve into a tree. And that is Dolive. Dolive and its evolution, who's got the name... 
New names, I'm struggling here. Arbolovo, which looks a lot more like a tree and a lot less humanoid, but there are a number of kind of feminine humanoid grass Pokemon. We're talking Blossom, Roserade, Lilligant, Hisuian Lilligant, Serena. There is a whole collection of these Pokemon forming. It seems like this is a common evolutionary trait. And I think with Dive's Pokemon Century, we work out how and why. Smoliv is, um, well, uh, like a lot of the grass Pokemon, uh, edible and a good way to protect yourself from getting eaten by people, certainly, and possibly even protected by people who would have been your predator at one time, is to evolve to look like them. It seems that that's what the olive is doing according to its Pokedex, and then when it evolves, it generously gives out its olive oil, which it's now able to spare, and so it can go back to looking a little bit more creaturesque. But I actually think this is where all of these Pokemon come from, is this branch of the tree. Now, if you played the game like me for the first time and you were doing the Path of Titans and you got to that final Titan and you realized it was the little Sushi Tatsuguri Pokemon, that, uh, but then it gets eaten by Dondozo, what's going on there? And you think, wow, Dondozo is this monster. It turns out, no. Dondozo is like the muscle, the bodyguard, the false dragon, Tatsuguri, that is the true threat behind it all. And it's because it's not being eaten. I thought it was being eaten. I thought it was a different Tatsuguri that was appearing for the second half of the battle. Dondozo, according to its Pokedex entry, isn't actually eating the Pokemon. It's hiding these sushi Pokemon away in its mouth, away from other predators to protect them. And apparently it's not very smart because it probably should just, just eat them, just gulp them up. But, and this leads me on to other Pokedex entries that I find so fascinating. There is a whole kind of water ecosystem at play when it comes to this region. Volu discards part of its own flesh so that it can kind of like swim faster because it doesn't need it anymore. And at the bottom of the Paldean ocean floor, Wugtrio, which are a form of fish confirmed. They had nothing to do with Dugtrio. They were originally thought to be a form of Dugtrio. They come on up and they like grab their prey and bring them down into their den where they eat them. Wugtrio has never been so fascinating. But I find the other bit of its Pokedex entry, the one that tells us that it was once thought to be a regional form, Really, really interesting because it makes me wonder how many regional forms do we currently have that are not regional forms, that are actually mistaken identity and are in fact convergent evolution like Wugdrio and Dugdrio. If it's possible with two Pokemon that look as closely related as this, then who knows who else this is possible for. Just a quick little one, Amphros has a Pokedex entry talking about how it can be seen out in the ocean. It's light on its tail, it's perfect for lighthouses, which it is perfect for lighthouses. This is a direct reference to the Johto region in which Amphros sits in a lighthouse and uses its tail to be seen. It's like a whole part of the Gen 2 plot. Anyone who played those games, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Right, I've got my final Pokedex entry, which is Big Theory Bay, and one about ghosts. But before I get into that, I want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, someone I think you'll get huge value out of, and that is Whatnot. Whatnot is a live streaming, selling and buying platform. If you're anything like me and you've got like loads of Pokemon cards, you love collecting Pokemon cards, or maybe selling them off and then using that money to buy new Pokemon cards. But the idea of listing everything up online, doing the pictures, getting those right, title, description, that seems long to you. That's because it is really long. The better way to do it is by clicking the link at the top of the description and downloading Whatnot today and jumping on where not only is listing your cards as easy as just putting in the title because guess what you're going to show off the card live so you don't have to worry about any miscommunication about whether your card is lightly played or mint or near mint everyone can see exactly what they're bidding for but if you're going on to see what kind of deals you can get you can get good deals the majority for sales on the platform all start at a pound so the chances of you getting a really good deal and getting it cheaper than you'd get anywhere else is really actually very very likely that kind of happened with a full box of first edition fossil uh just last month that we broke and sold on the stream those packs went incredibly cheaply but on top of that there's no bid sniping because at the 15 second timer mark if someone places a bid it goes back to 15 seconds meaning everyone can bid in confidence and no one needs to place a bid of more than they want to but my favorite part about it is engaging with the community getting a feel for who's actually buying my cards and who I'm going to be buying cards from because there's a whole lovely little community over there. On top of that, my next big stream, which is on the 18th of December at 8pm GMT, is going to be a charity live stream raising money for cancer research. So if you'd like to come along and pick up some cards, know all of your money is going towards cancer research, which is something I like to do every year is raise some money for them. So to be able to partner up with Whatnot here and do that there, and then that way if you don't, maybe you don't have the money to donate, but perhaps you'd like to get something for your money, you still can. Click the link at the top of the description, download the app, click onto my profile and make sure you've got the stream bookmarked and ready to go for that day. Thank you so much to Whatnot for sponsoring this video. I love working with you. And with that being said, let's jump into those remaining Pokedex entries. Mimikyu, a Pokemon that was only recently defined and described as a Pokemon. It was originally just thought to be a ghost wearing a cloth, 
This is huge. This is actually a massive part of Pokemon lore. It's been rumored and theorized and hinted at before. I've kind of talked about it a little bit before that I think that ghosts and ghost Pokemon are separate. And ghost Pokemon aren't necessarily dead. They are Pokemon that channel the energy of ghosts, but aren't themselves ghosts. They're living, breathing organisms. And it seems to be that that is sort of confirmed here, I think, with Mimikyu's Pokedex entry, separating once again ghosts from ghost Pokemon. And finally, we have Glimora. Glimora is an interesting Pokemon to say the least. It's kind of the ace on the champion's team for this region, which is really odd. You can also only find it really down in the Paldea Crater in Area Zero, which means that the champion has definitely been down there. But according to its Pokedex entry, its petals resemble Terra Jewels and are made of a sort of crystallized poison energy, meaning the crystallized energy of these Pokemon can in fact become Pokemon themselves. Because that's what terrestrializing is, right? It's the crystallization of Pokemon energy types. And it's interesting to know, and I think this is just like a sure thing. In the Crown Tundra, which was obviously the main bit of DLC released before Legends Arceus and BDSP, but of course before this generation, and I've already done a video talking about how there's so many hints in that to these games, including the fact that it's called the Crown Tundra and the terrestrial Pokemon are wearing terrestrial crowns, <laughs> gives us Reggie Drago, a Pokemon that according to its Pokedex entry is made of, of crystallized not terrestrialized, crystallized dragon energy. But when you look to the terrestrialized dragon energy type, you see on the head a dragon. A dragon head that, in my opinion, is 99% the same as Reggie Drago's dragon head. The only difference is that the one diamond shape on its nose is split into two for Reggie Drago. But otherwise, it's the same head. I think this energy, this crystal energy, can actually itself become Pokemon. And that's kind of what we're seeing with Glamora. This might also be like a little Easter egg slash theory bait thing to the AZ's Floet and the Crystal Flower that caused the ultimate weapon to go off if you believe that the ultimate weapon is what caused Area Zero in the first place. So those are just the Pokedex entries that I think are really, really interesting. Let me know if you think I've missed any down in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the link to download Whatnot today and thank you to Whatnot for sponsoring this video. Make sure you've got that live stream bookmark because it's going to be continuing on my charity live stream events for the weekend into that where if you want to get something for your money, uh, then you can raise money for charity and get cool Pokemon cards. Thank you all for watching, and of course, so high Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchup. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. Thank you so much to those of you supporting me on Patreon, allowing me to put out as many videos as I have lately, including the big patrons of this month, Anthony Lee, El Gator, Charmander Aznable, and Jed Rubin. Thank you.